In the last video, I took a calf from this close-up pen and brought it to the calf barn. And because it was a bull calf, I saw a couple of comments saying, oh, this calf's gonna be killed right away on the dairy farm because dairy farms don't keep their bull calves. You just send them right away to veal or they just kill it on the farm and right away this calf is gonna die. But that isn't the case. And uh, today we're gonna be talking about that. So the little buggers here with the blue ear tags, these guys are bulls or steers. We castrate them and then they become a steer. And the little girls here, they always get a white ear tag. You can see her number is 1464. So all the bull calves, we castrate them and they become steers. And we treat them the exact same as a heifer calf on our dairy farm here. We do raise them right to finish, 1,500 pounds, and then we send them to a packing plant and they become some nice juicy steaks. Dairy farms don't just kill their bull calves. It's, that would be such a waste to just kill them right away and it would be pretty sad. What most dairy farms do, they sell them to a feedlot where the guys there will raise these calves right to finish. For a lot of farms, it wouldn't make sense to keep their bull calves because they need to make quite a few investments to feed them out right to finish. But for us, it was pretty cheap. This is our roller mill where we roll barley. There's whole barley in there. It goes through the roller mill in here. So this thing's got some big metal rollers in there. It cracks the barley up so that the cows can consume it and digest it a lot easier. And then it goes into this bin right here and into the feed wagon. Since this is the main ingredient for our milk cows, we have a lot of it. And to raise these steers, we didn't need to go and set that up and invest a bunch of money just for the steers. We already had this. So it's the same with these two. We already have these for feeding the milk cows. We mix the TMR with that thing and it's nothing that we had to invest in. The other really expensive thing for a lot of farms would be feed or forage, silage or hay or other stuff to feed to them other than grain. And that takes a lot of land to grow all that feed. So if you don't have enough land, only enough land to grow feed for the milk cows, it might be a really big expense to find feed to feed those steers. But we have 2,100 acres and we can basically keep chopping up our crops until we have enough silage to feed however many cows we have on the yard, which means we can get pretty cheap feed. So that's another thing that is kind of a benefit to us. And the steer calves on our farm stay mixed up with our heifers up until they're about eight or 10 months old. And this is the first outside corral that all of the heifer calves and steer calves go into. They still stayed mixed up in this pen. They only go separate when they get into our two grower pens here, this corral and that one. The steers are separate from any heifers, but these two corrals are our grower pens and this is the only real big investment that we had to make to start raising these steers. Dude, I'm trying to film a video. Can you stop? Thanks, dude. If you want to keep more animals on your farm, you got to have room for them. So we had to build these two corrals just to keep the steers. The last thing to consider while raising steers is wages. There is going to be a little bit of extra work. And most of that extra work actually happens in the calf barn raising the little calves. That's the most labor intensive part of raising a steer to finish. But once they get outside in these corrals, it's pretty easy going. Pretty much all you gotta do is drive in front of them once a day with a feed wagon, dump some TMR right in front of them, and that's about it.
I've been getting more questions about our milk cow TMR, total mixed ration, the ingredient list, how many kilograms of what goes in there, and how much that ration costs per day. And uh, so we're gonna get into that in today's video. Barley and DDG are in the feed wagon now. We're gonna pull the tractor ahead a little bit underneath those two augers. So that was the minerals. It's kind of like the vitamins for the milk cows. And this is a beet pulp bin. This beet pulp comes out of Tabor, Alberta. And uh, it's a byproduct of sugar beets, I believe. The pallets in there are super heavy, so we always close the door at the bottom of the bin so that the auger can run empty when we're done loading it into the feed wagon. So to start it up, I just gotta turn the auger on and open this up a little bit. Wait until I got about 40 kgs to go. I'll shut the door off so the auger can run out and this way it starts up every time. Because if we just ran it full and then turned it off when the auger was full of this stuff, we've done it before. We gotta get up there with a wrench and turn it and empty it out by hand. And uh, it's just a really big hassle that we really try and avoid. give or take $100 or so, and we feed it twice a day. So in total, we're feeding our 290-ish milk cows about $1,400 to $1,600 a day in feed. The cost of the feed always depends on how much the ingredients cost. So if we got a bumper crop of barley silage one year, say we got 10 tons to the acre, the cost of that feed would go down. Whereas if we had a dry year and only got five tons to the acre, it would be a lot more expensive per ton. And same thing goes for barley grain. If the price of barley grain is really expensive, uh, our feed costs will go up. And if it's for some reason really cheap all of a sudden, it'll go down. And that's with all the ingredients. And that's kind of what decides how expensive our feed is. The reason we add water to that ration is because it makes the food a little bit sticky. And this way the cows, they won't sort the grain out. We want them to eat consistent feed throughout the entire day. And if we add water, it keeps the grain stuck to the silage a little bit better and that way the cows can't dig out all the tasty grain. They gotta eat the entire ration. Thanks for watching today's video guys. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. Check out the Instagram at SaskDutchKid and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.